I was born in San Francisco, California on February 24, 1955, to a very young unwed graduate student who had little to no resources, and because she was unable to take care of me, she decided to give me up for adoption, and even though my adoptive parents loved me, growing up without my biological parents, I always wondered why would a parent give up their only child to someone else? This unanswered question caused me to struggle a lot in finding my true identity. It made it difficult for me to make friends with children my own age, and I was often classified as a socially awkward loner. And because my parents wanted me to go to college at the age of 17, I naively chose a college that was almost expensive as Stanford, and all my working class parents' savings were spent on my college tuition fees. But only after six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, and I didn't know how college was going to help me figure it out. And here, I was spending all the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust it would all work out okay. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was the best decision I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required class that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on ones that looked far more interesting. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in my friends' rooms, and I would walk seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it, and following my curiosity and intuition, I stumbled on a class called calligraphy, which ignited my love for topography. And in the process, I was introduced to a brilliant man called Steve Wozniak by a mutual classmate. We both had similar interests in electronics, technology, and tinkering. We wanted to make some money, so we thought of an idea to create and sell circuit boards to tech companies and computer tinkerers like me and Wozniak. But then we came up with a better idea to create the personal computer. And after selling few of our possessions to fund our project, we launched the company which we named Apple in my parents' garage and came out with our first product, the Apple One. Our vision was to change the world through technology by democratizing the technology and making machines smaller, cheaper, and more accessible to everyday customers. After launching our first product, we managed to sell roughly 88% of the 200 units that were produced. And after finding a few more investors to fund our project, we launched a new and improved computer, which we called the Apple II. We retired our first product, which was pretty much just a circuit board. The result of making a few small changes, like including a monitor and keyboard with the circuit board as a unit helped us launch this new product into stratospheric levels of success. The Apple II would become one of the most successful as well as first mass-produced personal computers in the world. From this point on, our dreams were finally coming true. We decided to go big, so we created multiple products after the Apple II and strove to compete with giants like IBM who were dominating the personal computer market. Things were going smoothly. My net worth ballooned to $250 million. I was finally having everything I hoped for until my life took a turn for the biggest trauma I would ever experience. In our ambition to take things even further, I asked the marketing expert John Scully of Pepsi Cola to accept the role of CEO of Apple. However, the next several products of the company experienced negative feedback due to some flaws in the products. Our company switched from an innovative role to a defensive market share role when IBM launched their PC. Hence, IBM surpassed Apple in sales, and Apple had to compete with a PC-dominated world by IBM. And by 1985, I began to clash with the then-appointed CEO on the future direction of the company and how to stay relevant. The disagreements between both of us were at such odds that I was eventually fired from my own company by the investors. I couldn't believe it. It was so difficult to bear. So I left and decided to refocus on myself. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, then another company named Pixar, and Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. In a remarkable turn of events, Apple bought Next, and I returned to Apple, and the technology we developed at Next is at the heart of Apple's current renaissance. 
After joining Apple, the company came back on track and with the release of products like iMac that gained positive reviews from the customers. In the upcoming years, Apple introduced many more revolutionary products like MacBook Air, iPod, and iPhone. Our competitors struggled to produce similar technologies, and this became the reason for the success of Apple. And now, with all the efforts of our team, Apple is now the face of technology. We became the first company to hit $3 trillion market value. I share with you my story because sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for your work as for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you don't know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle, strive for greatness, be foolish and stay hungry. My name is Steve Jobs, and I'm the founder of Apple Inc. and Pixar Studios. And this is my story. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. We saw how Steve Jobs left school because he didn't find value in it, and you might be wondering why. Well, it's because school is not meant for people like Steve Jobs, for people like you and us. If you would like to see why going to school may not be the best idea, if you have ambitious goals you want to achieve, check out this video that's showing on the left, or click on the video that's showing on the right that YouTube thinks you might enjoy.